1965, the year the miniskirt made its first appearance. It was also the year of the great New York City blackout. The Rolling Stones topped the charts with I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Chattanooga State Technical Institute opens its doors downtown in the James Building, becoming the first school in Tennessee to offer applied associate degrees and certificates. Then the real work begins. Charles O. Whitehead was named director of Chattanooga State Technical Institute. Director Whitehead appointed Augusta Colwick as the first librarian because he felt her years of experience would be invaluable to the success of the new institute. At a recent class of 1967 reunion, faculty and staff of CSTI had lots of stories to tell. When I was first hired at Chattanooga State, we were downtown Chattanooga at 4th and Chestnut. There were four of us hired that year, and we were uh, given our offices, but they were in a coat closet. The influence that CSTI had on my professional career was just the fact that without CSTI, I would not have had a career in any profession. In those days, the, the um, opportunities in the Chattanooga area were very, very limited. But when we came here, we learned all about slide rules uh, instead of calculators, uh, punch cards, and typewriters. And boy, have we come a long way since then. When our institution was established, Chattanooga State Technical Institute, that race was not a condition of consideration. I mean, that was, that was uh, important to us uh, from the very beginning. Although the original plan was to build the campus at Moccasin Bend, unforeseen problems arose. The future of the new institution was uncertain. They were gonna build a foundation strong enough for a first floor and cap it off with enough strength to later add a second floor. And the soil tests were not favorable for that, so they began to look for other properties. James Franklin Harris Jr. generously donated 75 acres of land on Amnicola Highway. On a chilly day in April 1966, the groundbreaking ceremony for the new campus was held with both state and local dignitaries present. When they decided to build it out here, the world actually ended out here at the railroad overpass. This was a two-lane road. The road did not go through to 153, and it also was a two-lane road. We hadn't been here long until they drilled a hole in that bank out there and extended the highway over to 153. They were having a hard time getting water lines laid out to this distant location. But when this property was owned by the state, they readily put water lines out here for this property. Well, hello, that made the, all the other properties worth a lot more than they had been, minus the real estate that the state was now in possession of. So. It was a win-win for everybody. When the Amnicola campus was dedicated on June 5th, 1967, Chattanooga State Technical Institute was already overcrowded. Edgar H. Sessions was the new director. Most important, CSTI had received its first SACS accreditation. We had one building, and it was what's known today as the, the Albright Omniplex. But we had such a tremendous growth, we didn't have room for them. So we actually partitioned off the main hallway of the Omniplex into little classrooms. And there were a lot of classes taught in the hallway of the Omniplex uh, that, in that year. A gift from Singer in 1970 led to the creation of the Chattanooga State Foundation. When Dr. Charles Branch was there, we used to have a board of associates and at the Board of Associates, it was decided we should have a foundation in order to help raise funds and to supplement activities at uh, Chattanooga State Technical Community College at that time. Uh, our purpose was to assist the college uh, in its educational efforts in order to provide equipment and uh, furnishings for buildings, to provide scholarships, and to support educational opportunities for people within this community. 
CSTI continues to grow when the State Board of Education authorizes a new area vocational school. In 1968, a $1.7 million grant funds further campus expansion. Ground is broken in 1969 with project completion in 1971 when the Technology Wing opens. What is now the Tennessee College of Applied Technology at Chattanooga had its beginnings in 1965 as part of the statewide state area vocational technical school system which was under the direction of the Board of Education of the state at that time. And the mission, which still stays true today, is to train the workforce for highly technical jobs that need to be fulfilled here in the area. The Area Vocational Technical School here in Chattanooga became part of Chattanooga State Community College in 1981 and stayed that way until a name change came in effect in 1993 when all the 27 State Area Vocational Schools became Tennessee Technology Centers. And the mission remains the same, to train the workforce. Then in 2013, the Legislative Act changed the name once again to the present Tennessee College of Applied Technology, or commonly called TCATS throughout the state. Well, I chose TCAT because um, it just focuses me on the job that I want as far as a career. And I mean, it just, being able to come in and just do that is way, you know, better for me because the employers know that you can do the job and rather than just knowing that, you know, you read about it and graduated the class reading about it. Been at Chattanooga State now for 48 years, starting in 1967, the first year that we were on this campus. Uh, it's been a great experience being here at Chattanooga State. I've taught mathematics from the very beginning and then went into administration, but I've always taught a math class. And during the 70s, one of the things that uh, transpired for the mathematics department at that time was that we offered some classes by Channel 45. Uh, we developed an elementary algebra class and also a statistics class that students were able to take uh, by being at home. And at that time, that was quite unique. The teachers are more friendly, willing to work with you, really helpful. Um, the math center is great just to go in there and get help when you can't, like when it's on your time. And the tutors there, maybe not, if they can't help you, they'll make sure that you get help from somebody that does understand it and can explain it to you. I came in 79, went to work full time in 1980. We still had card catalogs, paper card catalogs. Now everything's electronic and I'm a systems person. I do, um, I'm a librarian three and I take care of the systems. I'm the systems administrator and the cataloger and I'm in charge of all of the technical services for the library. We've come a long way. We've had two renovations. One was in the early 90s um, and the most current one has just been in the last two years. And we, it's just a wonderful thing. The lighting, the library, it's modern, it's mobile, it's, geared towards um, electronic devices and providing services through those electronic devices that all people have now. All of the librarians that we've had here have been very, very passionate about libraries and passionate about providing service and Mrs. Colwick set that standard. Uh, Dick Harris was that way, Vicki Leather was that way, now Susan Jennings, our current uh, Dean of Library Services, is that way. And so we feel like that we're fulfilling the, the mandate that Mrs. Colwick laid down for us, and I think that she would be happy about that. In the early 70s, the Tennessee Valley Authority ranked as one of the top employers of Chattanooga State graduates. I was able to get enough background at CSTI to secure a job with the U.S. Army for two years after my graduation. Shortly after uh, being released from the Army, uh, I came back to Chattanooga State Tech, finished another associate degree, and then I was able to secure employment with the Tennessee Valley Authority. I was able to stay there for uh, 40 years. On April 17, 1973, Governor Winfield Dunn signed legislation creating the community college system in Tennessee. Chattanooga State Technical Institute became Chattanooga State Technical Community College.
The Deaf and Heart of Hearing program began in 1974 with grant funds for the first six or so years from Benwood Foundation and the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. The program included comprehensive services, support services for students such as interpreters, tutors, counseling as needed, um, housing assistance, and developmental studies courses for reading, math, and English. CSTCC holds its first graduation in what was known as the Bubble Gym, an inflatable structure on campus. Chattanooga State's Child Development Center opened in 1978 under the guidance of Mrs. Georgianne Ray. Since that time, a generation of Chattanooga State's employees and students' children have received tender, loving care on the main campus in close proximity to their parents. Closing out the decade, construction began on the long-awaited Physical Education Athletic Center in 1979. I think we would be remiss in, uh, in, in telling the history of Chattanooga State and particularly the history of, of nursing and allied health at Chattanooga State if we did not make mention of Dr. Don Stone. Don, uh, Don was the first leader uh, of all the allied health programs at Chattanooga State and we have a tremendous array of allied health programs at this institution. You would be hard pressed to be a patient in a health care facility in the greater Hamlin County area without a graduate of one of Chattanooga State's health care programs being a member of your health care team. Chattanooga State embarked on an ambitious building program that expanded the size of the campus over the next decade. In 1985, the Center for Advanced Technology was named in honor of Dr. Charles Branch. Upon Dr. Branch's retirement, Dr. Harry Wagner became Chattanooga State's second president the following year. In 1987, the Humanities Building was named for renowned local educator Dr. Clyde C. Bond. I decided to come to Chattanooga State um, I didn't even know that they had a music department. I was just going to do my general education requirements here and then transfer. Uh, but then when I got here, I realized that they have an excellent music program, excellent faculty, and I decided that Chattanooga State was the place for me for two years. Um, and I absolutely love it. It's been a great place for me to get started. Um, I, can't, I couldn't ask for a better faculty and, and staff. They're so talented. Communicator really captured, I think, a lot of the history of the college. Um, it's more than 25 years old. Any of the news on campus, um, when I was a student, we would get tidbits here and there and go after a story. Um, when I became advisor, I knew some of the things that were going on around campus and I would mention it to them if they wanted to do it, that's fine, but I wanted them to be able to go and find out about the story. It wasn't up to me, it was up to them. I'm actually here at Chattanooga State for concentration in journalism, and I found the media department and absolutely fell in love with the media. And then they showed me the communicator and I became the managing editor for the communicator, and I absolutely love the experience that it's given me for a future in journalism.
Throughout the 1990s and into the new millennium, Chattanooga State embarked upon another impressive period of growth and expansion. Under Dr. Catanzaro's tenure, new buildings were constructed and purchased on the main campus. More academic programs were added to the curriculum. New off-campus sites were opened, and the older sites were upgraded. Student activities are a great way to immerse yourself in the campus. It gives you a, a feeling of a second home and you meet friends you will never meet before. Engaging in activities like Oktoberfest where you dress up in costumes and show off talents is a fun way to meet new people. Events like the, the fall and spring retreat give you an idea of leadership and help you develop to become a better leader. Throughout the 1990s, the college also dominated the tennis court under the guidance of coach Betty Jones. Coach Jones was inducted into the NJCAA's Women's Tennis Hall of Fame in 1999. The Tigers softball team produced an impressive record, recognized in 2000 for winning more than 400 games. We have 100 students that come here every year uh, that participate in athletics uh, because of the academics as well as our athletic programs. Uh, we've got kids from Italy, California, to right here in our own backyard. So. I think we just put together a very good uh, atmosphere for students to be successful both in the classroom and also on the court and on the fields. I was here my junior and senior year as a middle college high school student and I graduated um, in 2005 with my high school diploma and my associate's degree in science in the same day. And I transferred to a university um, called Harding University. And I graduated with my bachelor's degree in early childhood education and a master's degree in reading and literacy development when I was 21. And to be able to have a master's degree and be that young, I could not have accomplished that without middle college, high school. So when I got the opportunity to come back, I jumped on it. Just the fact that because I was a student and um, I kind of knew what it was like to be here as a learner, um, it made me kind of almost have the extra advantage to know where my students are really coming from and kind of to meet them where they're at and to meet their needs and to encourage them to achieve their goals, achieve their degrees, and go on to be the best that they can possibly be. I love it. It's so much fun. I get to be excited to come to school every day and I get to hang with my friends and also I get to be treated as an adult, which is a huge thing for me because I get to sit in in classes and professors talk to me like I'm not a child and they treat me as a person. and. To feel like my opinion matters is extremely important because in high school I feel as if we're just there and the teachers don't really care about us, but here I feel like professors care about how I learn and how my life is going to end up. Chattanooga State purchased the Olin Mills Executive Office Building in 2004, now known as the Center for Business, Industry, and Health Professions. It is now the home to the Michael Hennon Hospitality and Culinary Center, as well as other academic programs and administrative offices. Chat State's WAWL 91.5 FM, better known as The Wall, celebrated 25 years on the air in 2005. Bob Riley started uh, what was WCSO uh, back in 1980, it was just 200 watts. It went to uh, 11,000 watts uh, by 1990. And since my background was in music, that's pretty much what I took over because when we went to start playing more uh, alternative type music, uh, 
I knew a pretty, a pretty good bit about it. So, and Bob was more an engineering type person. So that was his strong suit. And uh, between the two of us uh, and the, the students manning the on-air shifts, uh, it, it, it worked. The, the station uh, really reached out to a, a lot of people and uh, it was pretty well known in the community. One of my favorite classes was obviously a radio at the wall and I had my own shift, I had my own show and that eventually um, prepared me to get a job at the uh, Top 40 radio station here in Chattanooga, uh, that's Hits 96. And I just don't know if, uh, I, it prepared me to be able to turn on my mic and be able to talk about things comfortably and introduce songs, all of the things I didn't know how to do before, um, it helped. In the spring of 2006, the Joe brand was resurrected as a way of introducing Chattanooga State's new website. The theme was Ask Joe. We are your website tour guides. And we're here to Once again, the Joe campaign proved to be highly successful. Girl, keep it on the down low that we're know-it-alls. Until it wasn't. In 2008, Chattanooga State achieved a historical milestone when ground was broken for the $28.5 million Health Science Center. Chattanooga State proves to be a major selling point when attracting new businesses and industry to the area. In 2009, Chattanooga State is chosen to operate Volkswagen Academy. In mid-October of 2009, Chattanooga State held the grand opening of the long-awaited Health Science Center. Chat State partners with German company Wacker Polysilicon North America to open the Wacker Institute. The goal is to train the best chemical process engineering tech in the region. Many of the Institute's graduates are now employed by Wacker. And now uh, it's all about technology. So almost every one of the classes that need it, in fact, every one of the classes that need it has, has, has the appropriate technology in it and others, uh, we're trying to get to the place where every classroom has, has technology in it. We haven't gotten there yet, but we're working toward that. That is ultimately the goal. Chattanooga State Community College looks to the future with great anticipation under the leadership of its fourth president, Dr. Flora Tidings. Dr. Tidings ushered in one of the most important eras in Tennessee higher education when the freshman class comprised of the first Tennessee Promise students began their studies at Chat State in the fall of 2015. Chattanooga State gives a great start to anybody in any profession. One of the neat things about Chattanooga State, it is so innovative. Whatever the technology is, that's where Chattanooga State is. The Chattanooga State family embraces the past, cherishes the present, and looks forward to another 50 years. Mm -hmm.